Amen. Right then, if my lovely volunteers would like to come up, that would be amazing.
So prayer is really simple and essential for us to have a great relationship with God. So I'm just going to say a prayer and then our young people will go out to our groups. Father God, we just thank you for your goodness. We just thank you, Father God, that you are just here with us this morning. We thank you that your Holy Spirit will just be come on upon all of us, Lord. We thank you that our eyes will be guided to you and you will just help us with our prayer life, Father God. We just thank you that our, you are our provider, our comforter, and everything, Father God. As our young people go out to the Greeks, we thank you that they will, they will have fun, but more importantly, Lord, that their eyes will be focused on you and you will just pour your goodness into them. Amen. So as um, any children and young people go outside the civil hall for go activities, uh, the rest of us are going to turn towards confession. Um, let's just pause for a few moments and be mindful of our need for the Lord to bring us that forgiveness and to lead us in the path of repentance. So let us return to the Lord our God and say to him, Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. So my the God of love and power, forgive us and free us from our sins. Heal and strengthen us by his Holy Spirit and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And so as we celebrate that the Lord has made us new in his name once again, we're going to a time of praise and worship, some worship. So in this time, then, let us feel a completely set free by the Lord to worship him in spirit and in truth. If you comfortably out, let's stand together.
So, how are you with prayer? We do quite a lot of it here in church, don't we? But are you deep down, are you deep down a little bit unsure? Are you a bit apprehensive about meeting the God, the God who created the universe? And what about silence? Now, if I asked you now to sit in silence, I wonder what would happen. Let's try it now. You don't mind to close your eyes forever. Let's just sit in silence, shall we? Okay, how was that? <clears throat> well, I tell you what happens to me so often when somebody actually mentions silence or even prayer, I fidget. And a thousand thoughts bombard my brain. How many of you thought, how long is she going to make me sit here? <laughs> We've got some, some truth coming out here. Will the dinner be burnt if she makes us sit like this? Does this ring the bell? That somehow silence and prayer just kind of it sets, you, it sets your mind on fire, doesn't it? Because silence, waiting, isn't easy for us. You read all these books, don't you, about people who sit in silent contemplation for hours. How do they do it? Do I even want to do it? So as we begin to think about prayer as part of our Jesus-shaped people program, let's just think for a few moments about why, why we pray. For those who, of you who have more recently come, <coughs> excuse me, come to St James, I wonder, did you pray before you started to come here? Did you pray before? And I wonder why you prayed? Why did you pray? And if you ask people in the street, we went out there and asked them if they prayed, I think many, many of them would actually say yes. They prayed in desperation. They prayed in hope. They prayed in fear, in a kind of wishful longing for something else. You see, I think that it is most fundamental. Prayer satisfies that deep longing in each of us to talk with God, to hear his voice, to know his presence, to acknowledge that we are actually more than just a jumble of cells. So if it's important, how can we really embrace prayer? How can we make it into a fulfilling relationship with the God who created us? The God who put those cells together in a most amazing way. The God who understands physics and DNA. The God who understands algebra and all the other stuff that they tried to ram into us at school. A fulfilling relationship with our Father who sent us Jesus so we would understand just how much he loves us. Jim Packer said, if you're a Christian, you pray. <coughs> and the recognition of God's sovereignty is the basis of your prayer. That's why we pray, because we're acknowledging that God is God. <coughs> if we pray, it's because we're convinced that God is powerful and in control. Believers go, go to him in prayer, entrusting the nuts and bolts of our daily lives into his omnipotent hands. And you know, Jesus prayed. You might think that being the Son of God, he might he wouldn't need to pray. But somehow he just kind of knew. But the part of Jesus that was holy human, he prayed. It was fundamental to his life and purpose. Jesus prayed because he was God and man, and he lived a life of trust and dependence on his Father to lead him. You know, before he chose the disciples, he went into the mountains to pray all night. Was he praying for wisdom? Did he tussle with God and say, well, you know, Lord, that Peter, do I really choose him? He's a wild card. And Judas... No way, Father, I can't trust him. I know he'll stab me in the back. 
but God spoke to his son as he prayed and gave him the wisdom to make hard choices. Jesus prayed in anguish for a way out of the cross and his father gave him the strength and determination to go the whole way. That says something about the power of prayer, doesn't it? <clears throat> Jesus knew that prayer is as necessary as sleep and food and rest and water. <clears throat> Jesus had the weight of the world on his shoulders and yet he prayed. Jesus had real work to do and yet he prayed. See, prayer isn't a sentimental excursion or an instinctive hitting of the panic button, although we often use it that way, nor is it an arrogant assumption of our right to God's attention. You who God, I'm here. It's not, it's not that. No prayer. Prayer is how each one of us enter into God's heavenly sanctuary, for which Jesus gives us the key. And he's there too, you know, in heaven interceding for us. Because Jesus knows us, he gets us, he understands. Have you ever had anybody be an advocate for you? Anybody who stood for you and just stood up for you? Perhaps it was your mum or your dad who stood up for you. Well, Jesus is doing that in heaven. He's standing up for us. He's there willing to answer, to listen to our prayers because he gets us. Now, I think it's pretty amazing. You see, our prayers don't just dissolve into space. It's not like we pray and they're like, like smoke spiralling until they disappear. No, prayer is a mysterious reality that our world and God's world are not far apart. Prayer is where heaven and earth meet through Jesus, whose own prayers were deep, rich, and sometimes agonising, and he invites us to stand on the same spot, the spot he bought for us through his achievement on the cross and his gift of the Holy Spirit. The New Testament asks us to make prayer not just a habit, but the deep heartbeat of our lives. So in the next few weeks, we're inviting you to go deeper, to get serious, and to embrace the wonder of a relationship with God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Many of us have been praying for years, but there's always the challenge to come closer, to get real, to take a few risks, and to set our minds on the goal. Are you with me? Yes. Hey, excellent. So today, we're thinking about those first steps to prayer, and that's about getting into the position to meet with our Lord and Saviour, to wait on God and to enter his presence. I think we decided earlier that it isn't easy because the world plans for our attention. A writer called Les Pascal wrote, all of humanity's problems stem from the inability to sit quietly in a room alone. Hmm. So how can we wait on God? How can we still ourselves to enter his presence? When we sat just in silence, um, it wasn't that easy, was it? Imagine doing it for a bit longer. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 7 says, there's a time to be silent and a time to speak. And God normally speaks with a still, small voice. So it's logical to conclude that to hear God we must be silent. We must wait on him. We expect God's voice to boom like thunder. But mostly, God whispers. God whispers. We expect him to wear hobnail boots, but he tiptoes into the crowd. We expect God to be different, but God so often comes to, into our lives to be disguised as our own lives. God in our lives. The best way, therefore, to start praying is actually to stop praying, to be still before the Lord and wait patiently. If you get a chance, have a look at Psalm 37 and verse 7. 
So, have you ever come home and been bombarded with questions or instructions? Mum, can you do this? Dad, can you do that? Watch the tea. They come through the door, don't they? They, kiss, they sling their bags on the floor, they kick their shoes off, and they say, watch the tea. Roger does that as well. <laughs> <laughs> can you put the bin out? Can you lay the table? Can you wash up? How was school or college today? What did you learn? You did behave, didn't you? Oh, or I've had a terrible day. I've got a headache. Oh, those builders are like a terrible noise. You may have thought, wouldn't it be wonderful? Wouldn't it be wonderful if someone could just acknowledge my presence? Someone could just say, hello, mom. Hello, dad. Hello, son. And don't you think we owe God that same respect? Because in a way, that's what God, that's what Jesus taught us in the Lord's Prayer. Before we launch into stuff we need, you know, daily bread, forgiveness of sins, deliverance from evil, Jesus tells us to pause, to greet God affectionately as our Father. Hallowed be your name. That's what Jesus taught us. You see, prayer can easily become a frenetic extension of the manic pace of life. Distracted, driven, maybe anguished, in despair, stressed, stressed. We rush into the court of the kings at a rate of knots without lifting our faces to meet his gaze. But true prayer isn't so much what we say or what we do, it's something we become. It's not a transaction. It's not handing over a credit card and getting a loaf of bread and a bag of carrots in return. It's about relationship. Connecting in a chaos. I think that's the word God gave me when I was preparing this. Connecting in a chaos. So God, hold on to that. Connecting in a chaos. God wants us to stop and pause. As it says in Psalm 23, to lie down in green pastures. Don't we all have a longing to get away from it all at times? I know we talk about our holidays and things like that, how they bring refreshment to us. I mean, why do you think fishing is so popular? Yeah? I met a friend in Ottawa the other day. She said she was taking her son fishing for the next day, all day. All day. Don't you get bored, I said, not being able to imagine anything worse than sitting by a lake all day, hoping a fish might take the bait. Not at all, she said. Time just flies, sitting, waiting. Well, there you go. Those of you who go fishing will understand. As people wait for fish, God invites us to be still and know that I'm God. Dallas Willard once described Jesus as relaxed. Have you ever thought about Jesus being relaxed? I never had. With just three years to save the world, he might have been a bit stressed, yeah, but he still found time to attend parties and to go fishing, yeah. This means that he was officially less busy than the average pastor. There you go, Gail. <laughs> so, right, because you see when we're still and know God, that's when his presence becomes known. But as I said, as I said before, it's so hard it's because we're conditioned by modern society to be consumed by endless activity. The TV buzzing in the background, how many of us have the t TV on or the radio? Because we like that, that buzzing in the background, don't we? Moments of stillness waiting at the start of prayer are moments of surrender, in which we, re we actually resign from saving the planet. Where possible, it, it's good to start a prayer time by sitting or walking silently for a few moments without saying or doing anything. It's good to be in a quiet environment but it's equally possible to find a stillness on a crowded train 
or under an apron, as Susanna Wesley did, in the midst of a large brood of children. I think she had ten children or something. How did she have time to pray? Yet she threw her apron over her head. And the children knew that was her time. You can still be still at a desk in a busy office. Even, dare I say, in the loo. It's a moment to centre our scattered thoughts, pruning our hearts and minds to worship, switching our phones to silence, dare I suggest that? Yeah, and letting the screens go blank. You might may find it easier to encounter God when you're actually active, walking, swimming, cycling, running, exercise can be effective in stilling your mind. How often have you gone for a walk to clear your mind? Yeah, we do do that, don't we? You go for a walk to clear your mind. And sometimes the wonder of nature can fill, fill you with gratitude for God's creation. Jesus prayed actively. He drew in the sand. He threw himself on the ground in the Garden of Gethsemane. He prayed as he healed. He walked the hills around the Sea of Galilee. I'm sure he talked with his father as he walked. As I said before, several times it sounds simple, but it's rarely easy because our mind rebels, doesn't it? The temptation to run headlong into our prayers is almost irresistible. A tyranny of demands and distractions strikes up like a brass band in your head. Or as one Augustinian monkey, 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 monk, described it, an inner chaos going on in our heads like some wild cocktail party in which we find ourselves the embarrassed host. It makes you wonder what goes on in some monasteries, but never mind. But as we wait on God, it's so important for our spiritual, mental and physical well-being to silence the world's relentless chatter, to become still in the depths of our soul. In, our, in, a, in a sense, you know, our lives depend on it. Did you know that when you're stressed, our adrenal glands release cortisol, which actually impairs our capacity for clear thinking and healthy decision making. But as you sit quietly, the cortisol subsides and things become clearer. And once God has your attention, well, things can happen. So I'd like to finish with one thing that helps me because I've got a mind like a demented bee. And that's centering prayer. Perhaps some of you do this already. I mean, there are many ways to steal your mind, but this is just one, and, and I do it, and it helps me. What you do is you relax, you, you perhaps know this, but what you do is you relax and you breathe deeply. And as you breathe in deeply, you can say in your mind a phrase. For example, as you breathe in, Father in heaven, and then you breathe out, hallowed be your name. So breathe in. Do you want to try this? Breathe in. Father in heaven, breathe out, hallowed be your name. Breathe in. Your kingdom come. Breathe out. Your will be done. Or breathe in. Come, Holy Spirit, and breathe out. Abide in me. If you do this a few times, it can help you to centre on God and just shut out that be. However, we choose to wait on God. Let's, from now on, commit ourselves, shall we, to making space for God in our daily lives. I promise you it's worth it. Our lives depend on it. Amen. So for this um, coming fortnight, uh, Jesus Shape People, our challenge for us all to have a go at is um, the pause part of prayer, just to stop and be still. And Liz gave some really good advice as part of what she shared there as to how we can go about that, um, including the centering prayer and um, breathing, just focusing on um, how we breathe uh, to begin with, to then just look towards God. Um, and to focus our minds completely on him. 
Um, and um, something else that can be helpful as well is if you do find um, that you get quite distracted when you try to just be still completely uh, before God, um, and then you think all sorts of thoughts like, oh, I must remember to get some bin liners from uh, the supermarket. All these kind of um, odd thoughts can pop into our mind. Just have a notepad um, by your side so that you can write any such things down on there and then get back to that point of just seeking to be still in God's presence, to truly pause so that you can become open um, to what he would say to you. Um, and um, Psalm 46 says, Be still and know that I am God. Um, and as we use that as our starting point for prayer, so many wonderful things can happen inside us and we can really uh, change and shine so much. So let's focus this week and next week um, on growing in this discipline and just pausing and being still and um, just simply there in God's presence. So if you're comfortably able, let's stand together now as we declare our faith. We share together as God's family, remembering all that we believe. I believe in God, the Father of all Martin, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. Suffered and conscious violence, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins. The resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Well, let's take a seat, and Dan's going to lead us in a short time of prayer. We sit in the silence. Let's just remember how gracious is our God, how powerful is His Word, and how He inspires people to share as Liz did this morning. Heavenly Father, we come before you today with a humble heart and mind. We pray that your gospel of Christ will be effective and spread rapidly throughout the world, bringing glory to your name. Thank you for our Christian brethren and those who teach the word of truth. Empower them with courage and strength to continue proclaiming the good news of the gospel of grace. Equip each one with the resources they need to effectively reach out to the lost and hurting. May your spirit move in a powerful way in the hearts of those who hear the gospel message, that they would be drawn to it and come to know the saving grace of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, for the privilege of intercessory prayer, and we ask that you would draw us closer to yourself as we stand firm in our personal prayer ministry for your greater glory. In this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, how amazing to realise that by grace through faith in Christ we have become members of your holy, heavenly family, and that in him we have the forgiveness of sins and life everlasting. Thank you for this amazing relationship that we have in Christ Jesus, and we pray that by your grace we may present our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to you for your praise and for your glory. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithful promises to strengthen us, establish us, and protect us 
even when our faith falters and we prove faithless and false to you. Keep us ever mindful of this truth and guide us in the choices we must make. Use us as an instrument of your grace and keep us from all evil so that we may grow in grace and in the knowledge of you and in our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Heavenly <coughs> Father, thank you for your word and the wise instructions and important warnings it contains. We pray that we may be steadfast and immovable in our faith, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that everything we do for your name's sake is never wasted, but will continue to prepare us for the work you have given us to do until Christ comes for his church. We thank you in his glorious name. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you that your love has no beginning and no end, and there is no reserve in that love for your children. May you direct the hearts of all your people into the love of God and the steadfastness of Christ, so that we may be a reflection of him in all we say and in all we do. In Jesus' name, Amen.
finding and may we be aware of that freedom as we go through this prayer now, Lord Jesus. Amen. Would you like to take a seat? And um, just before um, I go through the communion prayer, and um, just to let everyone know, um, if you never join us at the moment, um, please still do come forward and receive a prayer of blessing. Um, so that you feel completely included in this family meal that we share together. Um, and if um, you know um, within you that you have trusted the Lord and that you want him to be um, your Lord and Saviour, um, that everything I've just prayed is true for you, that you can pray in Jesus' name, then just feel at ease to take um, the bread and the wine to die to. And so the Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning, you have created all things. All your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time, you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us speech and breath, that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven, we might find a voice to sing your praise and say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord, as a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace the people as your own, and in turn to find and rebuild your love, remain steadfast. From them, you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread, in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. And the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave a few thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And at the end of supper, taking a cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Do this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Grace is a mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence to sacrifice my once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. We would pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May there be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ, and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bring us at the last with all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendour for which you have created us, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, before you stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you. Father Almighty, whose songs of everlasting praise and sign, bless you in your honour and glory and power, live us forever and ever. Amen. Be made one by the power of the Spirit, as Jesus our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So we are many, we are one body.
the Lord Jesus has done for us. Let's pray together this prayer of gratitude communion. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this fellowship of peace and prayer here in this place. We are well and new in your ways and refreshed in your presence. As we soon prepare to live this place, remind us of your promise that you will always be us to the close of the age. Amen. And um, in terms of um, church family news, and so we know we've got our um, challenge to be aware of this fortnight, to be still and know that God is God, pause and truly take time um, just to be um, before him and um, without any distractions going on. Um, and um, that's encouraging each other in this as well. And um, if we find that um, it becomes um, more difficult than we might have anticipated, let's share any struggles we might have. So that we can encourage each other and pray for each other in this challenge. Um, and then um, as for things that are coming up, um, please um, ask for all of your prayers for um, the progress of the grant forms for the church room funding. Um, as a has being started now, so we pray that the time will all work out and um, that we'll be able to get things coming in in the right order in terms of those grants. Um, and we have a goal of by the 1st of April next year we need to have all of that um, money together which is a big prayer uh, because um, it may be that um, we can go with a quote we're just waiting on a, f- a few more responses from church council members um, but um, we have at the moment a sort of provisional goal anyway of um, 212 and thousand that we need to gather for the church roof, which is a, not a small task, but with God, all things are possible, and in Him we trust. Um, there's going to be events that are happening. Do you want to share a little, little bit down about things that are planned around raising money and putting money towards the roof? Basically, we've got the Christmas Youth Supper on the 14th of October. Hopefully, sometime in November. We will be doing um, a referee's night, as it were, um, perhaps called Too Many Black or whatever, uh, that Alan and Alan are going to uh, help us in. Uh, hopefully, in December, Margaret will be doing a wreath making workshop. Uh, those who are interested in making Christmas wreaths or wreaths ready for Christmas. And in January, we're hoping to have a quiz. If we can work it, that we have a supper with it as well, we will do it. Yeah. Uh, and we have um, wrist things for sale as well. Yes, yeah, so, so, um, so last Sunday night, so it's an idea from Victoria and White House who comes on Sunday evenings that we've got these on sale for a pound each. So we've got all different verses from the Bible up. Um, so um, if you've got one of these, um, um, please get one then after the service. Um, and then, as I said, we have a time to um, catch up, get to know each other more after the service today. Um, and um, those who joined us over um, the past year, um, or maybe slightly longer than that, in some cases, are uh, staying behind um, to show in the meal. So, um, we have got quite a bit of food, so if you didn't sign up and you wanted to still stay, um, we've got um, vegetable stew and some chicken casserole, jacket potato, bread. Um, cheese that's ham and stuff so and um, you're very welcome to stop with us and i'll just show you a bit about the uh, vision and values of the church as uh, we've been on a journey as pcc um, over these past three years um, so um, we've got a song to finish with great is your thankfulness if you should have let's stand together <laughs>
the fun of her blessing. My God, who curves the lilies and feeds the birds of the sky, who leads lambs to pasture and deer to water, who multiplies loaves and fishes and changes water into wine, lead us, feed us, multiply us, and change us to reflect the glory of our Creator, now and for all eternity, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among us and remind of us always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of the cross. Amen. Thank mm-hmm. you.